it's amazing. You'll see just how little water had to transfer from this side to this side to turn that into a block of ice. Water evaporates into a vacuum to give something called a vapor pressure. If the water is then condensed, water travels from point A to point B at almost the speed of sound. A point that can be vividly demonstrated by actually making one of these devices and cooling one of the bulbs down to about minus 50 Celsius. However, once you immerse this flask at minus 40, the water will instantly freeze on here and the vapor pressure on this one will go to zero, which means the, the gas will absolutely scream across. There we go, tap is fully open. Let's see what this does for us. Boom, look at that. Goes absolutely ballistic almost instantly. Okay, so what we've got here is now it's a much bigger tube going from one side to the other. So previously there was actually a constriction in the tube which slowed down the rate that water could go from one to the other. Here it's, it's not restricted like that. So now when I put the cold bath on this side, there'll be a huge transfer of water from this side to this side. If what I'm telling you is correct, that'll mean this gets really cold really quickly um, from the evaporative cooling. Some ballpark numbers. If I want to turn water from liquid into gas, it takes about 2 million joules per kilogram. And that energy in this case is supplied by the water. Cool, so if I can force my water to evaporate, how much water do I have to evaporate before the rest will freeze? Well, it turns out that to freeze water, you've got to suck out about a third of a million joules per kilogram. So if I evaporate about one tenth of my water, then the rest should freeze. So how am I gonna force the water to evaporate? Well, on the other side of this vacuum chamber here, I'm gonna put it in a cold bath at about minus 50 Celsius, and that's gonna condense all the water that hits there. And this process is gonna happen super fast because there's a vacuum in this tube, so there's nothing to obstruct the water molecules from going from one side to the other to the point where you only need, if I'm right, to evaporate about 10% of this water before the rest of it turns into a block of ice. Now, I've never done this before, so we will see how this goes. So, let's get that into the uh, cold bath. Okay. Oh, an instant boiling on this side. Now, oh, and I can see it icing up already. <laughs> Jeez, this is fast. Yeah, I can see. And in fact, it is. It's ice already on the top. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. And I think that's the rest of it. Is that the rest of it freezing? It is, it's, it's frozen. I can see it freezing, I can hear it cracking. That's unbelievable. And it's quite impressive on the thermal camera as well. Get that into the uh, cold bath. Okay. Oh, an instant boiling on this side. Now, oh, and I can see it icing up already. <laughs> Jeez, this is fast. Yeah, I can see. And in fact, it is. It's ice already on the top. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. And I think that's the rest of it. Is that the rest of it freezing? It is, it's, it's frozen. I can see it freezing, I can hear it cracking. That's unbelievable. That's amazing. Is it solid? No, it's, it's frozen on the top. That's amazing. And just to show you how much I've 
I've actually distilled some minuscule amount of water over in all of this. So if I now leave it all to thaw out, you'll see just how little water had to transfer from this side to this side to turn that into a block of ice. And it should be almost nothing. Okay. That's amazing. Amazing demonstration. This is just block of ice. Okay, and we're now melting on this side, and there is. There's about a drop of water in there on that side. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. And you should. Just a tiny amount of water has actually, no, it's more than that. It's, eh, it's maybe a milliliter. But that's enough to turn the other side into ice. And that's one of the reasons why the Hydrovac won't work. So that is probably one of the closest demonstrations you're gonna get of just how quickly water will freeze in space, short of the uh, slightly more expensive experiment of actually going into space and throwing a glass of water out of the window. Why is that? Because when you're actually pumping on something to maintain a vacuum, in space obviously you don't need to pump to maintain a vacuum, space is a vacuum. You see, if I were reliant on a mechanical pump, I can only take a small volume out of the kit for every revolution of the pump. And seeing as the gas is gonna be traveling from one end of the kit to the other at about the speed of sound, that's gonna be wholly inadequate for maintaining the maximum evaporation rate. However, what's going on here is I've made one side of the kit really cold. So as soon as the water molecules hit the cold side of the vessel, they instantly freeze on it. Meaning that the pumping rate here is basically as fast as the molecules are hitting that and condensing on it, which is pretty much the speed of sound. A cute variant of pumping called cryopumping. So how long does it take for water to freeze in space? Well, not long. So would you freeze really quickly in space? Well, turns out not so much because your skin really isn't that permeable. Water doesn't come out of your skin that easily, nor will your blood boil in any real sense and you certainly won't explode. Why? Well, that's a story for another day. And if you like that cute little demo, give this video a thumbs up and remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you really like this channel, you can support it directly through Patreon. And I'll leave the links below.